This is going to be a little video about the STEC 55X in the Red Hawk. Redbird Red Hawk 172. Show you how to use it. Go ahead and set our altitude bug. Go up to 65. Heading indicator, set that to our current course 006. I'm going to turn on the autopilot master. And the STEC is going to go through its boot up sequence. And we're looking for this ready. When it says ready, then we can start pressing buttons. So first thing we'll do again is set our heading bug just by pressing, and then we'll press heading, and it should capture. It appears to be doing. And then we've got about a 400 foot per minute climb. We'll go ahead and press vertical speed. That should capture the climb. And it's showing plus six, so it's going to try to climb at point, uh, 600 feet per minute. And you really got to pay attention to the airspeed because this does not have auto throttle. So we can turn that down to something a little easier, maybe three. That trim annunciator is just letting us know that it wants some trim. So we got a 300 feet per minute climb going, and it's taking us up to 6,500 feet, and it's holding the heading. So we've got heading and vertical speed. And he's a little nose down trim. So we'll manually trim it. No electronic trim in this aircraft. I'm going to go ahead and change the heading. It defaults to the heading bug. So I'm going to change the heading to 330. The aircraft will automatically roll onto that heading. That annunciator just telling us that we're 200 feet to go before we get to 6,500. You can see we've got a, uh, a vertical speed now of about 300, which equates to 80 knots, which is exactly what we want for the climb. We're climbing at 85% to keep the aircraft from overheating. These aircraft have a tendency to overheat if you climb at full power, at least uh, in the summertime at Arizona. Okay, we're coming up on 6,500. And now to capture, we're going to have to hit Alt for altitude, and it should capture our current altitude. Let's see what happens. Yep, airplane's pitching over now. Airspeed's picking up. So we've got heading and altitude selected right now. Seeing it needs some nose down trim. So we'll give it a little bit of that. Vertical speed is zero. We're holding at 65.50. Airspeed's coming up to cruise. We're going to set the power back to 75, or our load percentage on the thrust lever will be 75. So that's heading mode. Very simple, very basic, very straightforward. Now we'll switch over to the VOR, the Douglas VOR. I've got already set 108.8 in the GTX 650. I'm going to come over here to CDI. I'm going to press CDI. There's my VOR1 head. And I'm going to go ahead and center that up with a two flag. It's going to be off to our right, uh, right rear. 
now, I'm going to go ahead and hit nav. And the aircraft is turning right. It's going to track inbound to the VOR. Should maintain our altitude of 6550. While we're doing that, I'll show you a pretty cool feature of the GTX 330. If I go to function, and I go to altitude monitor, and I hit start, it will actually monitor any altitude deviations, which is really nice for instructors. Okay, the airplane is turning. Nice standard rate turn, perfect standard rate turn. You can see from the magenta line here. Turning back towards the field. We're fairly close to the VOR right now. I go direct. And waypoint, select waypoint. Uh, nearest. VOR, Douglas. Okay, now it's going to try to capture. You can see it's got a nice intercept angle right now. It's going to try to capture that radial. It was about the 285 radio. We're pretty close. We're, uh, looks like two and a half miles from the VOR right now. I don't know how successful this will be. I'm going to go ahead and help it out a little bit. There we go. All right, now it's captured. And it's just going to maintain that. It should fly right through it. Busy Douglas traffic, Hawk November Golf, two miles. Northwest of the VOR, 6,500 will be over flying the VOR to the southeast. Okay, and now that it's so close, it's having a tough time, so we'll go ahead and return to heading mode. And I'm going to put us on a northerly heading. While we're doing that on the G500, uh, go to charts, select, Douglas. We're going to take the, uh, we're going to load in the RNAV runway 17 approach. There's the actual chart, and we can zoom in. Doesn't look like it's going to um, give us any overlay. We'll try something over here. Procedure, approach, hey Doug, that's what we want, RNAV 17 approach, vectors, let's see, we'll go tonic, load approach, Direct Tonic, activate. Okay, it's set up to take us to Tonic. So we'll go over here to CDI, GPS. We'll hit Nav. And it looks like we're only going to get the chart for situational awareness. It is not going to overlay our position. Okay, so you've got a heading nav and then you've got approach. And once we're on the approach, we can arm that 
activate it and it will fly the approach with a much uh, tighter tolerance than it would if we were just on nav. It will fly it on nav mode as well. I'm going to go ahead and take this off, get us back to map. And instead of driving all the way out to Tonic, which is still 10 miles away, we'll just fly out to Epicy, and we'll get established, and we'll let the uh, S-Tech fly the approach for us. See right there. What we'll do is we will set up a heading by about 330. We'll set the airplane on that heading. We'll keep this altitude. Vertical speed, three. And capture. I'm going to tell the GPS we're going direct tunic or epicy. Engine instruments are looking good. Point six from Epicy. Put us on a nice, um, go ahead, turn us. I get us on a nice intercept angle where we can arm the uh, approach. Now we'll keep coming around. All right, so I'm putting us on a uh, heading that will give us a nice, uh, looks like about 35, 40 degree intercept angle. Once the aircraft gets stabilized there, we will hit the approach. And the airplane should start flying the approach. Looks like it's doing. Go 
back to the chart. Zoom in. Looks like we should be coming down to 5,700, so we'll do that. We'll go altitude, 57. It's picking up the uh, glide slope right here. You can see we're coming in from underneath, which is perfect. And it looks like it's armed, so it should when this um, vertical path indicator, because we've got LNAV plus uh, vertical guides, it should capture and it should fly it uh, right down to MDA for us. Nice feature on the Garmin. See what happens. We'll come back to approach speed, about 75. Okay. There it goes. It's, it's starting its descent. Perfect. Now we're 2.3 from JASIC, where we should cross at 5,700. Leaving altitude. Want some down trim. Okay, glide slope is now active. Approach is active, nav is active. Coming out of down about points 700 feet. Tracking perfectly. Thank you, Douglas Chad Hawk, November Cross. It's uh, about a four mile final one. Thank you, Douglas. Tracking nicely. Got the power pulled back to about 57, or the thrust lever pulled back to 57% load. Here comes 57. And it looks like we've come down to, not sure how to move this thing around. beautifully. Want some trim up now. There we go. Got to press the button. 